Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome at long last to Salt and Sacrifice, the sequel to follow up to the amazing 2D side scrolling Metroidvania Souls like adventure that was Salt and Sanctuary. Gosh, I hope I don't mix these names up. Uh, back in 2016, so we are six years later, and we're finally getting a follow up, and I'm very, very excited. I did check out the beta from a few months ago. We had a lot of fun streaming that. The network test, this does now have full live co-op and invasions, not just local as Salt and Sac excuse me, Salt and Sanctuary, it's gonna happen. Um, but this is made by Scott Studios and Devoured Studios, which I actually don't know what the overlap is. Really just two coders made this amazing, beautiful, hand-drawn game, and I can't wait to get into it. Scott Studios, a huge personal thank you to you wonderful people for sending me this copy to check out. I cannot wait to dive right in. Now, I'm going to get into a new game here. I've already kind of configured some of the, uh, well, configurations, the settings here. There's not too much. Pretty straightforward with the graphics. I'll be playing in 4K. Audio, I had to turn this pretty well down. You'll have to let me know if the mix is better. Um, sound effects, 50%. Background music, 30%. And then everything else is pretty much just left as standard. I am playing on a DualSense controller, but it has Xbox input, so hopefully that doesn't confuse any of you. It's just... Right now, this game is available on the Epic Game Store or PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. No other platforms at this time, likely more to come at a future date, but as of right now, Epic Game Store and PlayStation, um, and in order to get a controller working, because Epic Game Store doesn't natively support controllers, as far as I can tell, I had to actually launch this through Steam and kind of trick it into thinking I have an Xbox controller. But anyway, getting into a new game, um, you know what we have to do? It's not gonna be Blue Lizard Jello. No, no, no. He has been with us in just about every adventure we've ever had, Silvarius. And we need to take a look. We have a lot to go over here. This looks very similar to the network test. Let's see. Um, so we have the name, class, assassin, oh jeepers, cleric, fighter, duelist, high blade, paladin, ranger, and sage. The magic in Salt and Sanctuary was really fun and I didn't do a lot of it. However, I did just get past a Sorcerer run in Elden Ring. So I don't think I wanna go pure Sorcerer, but maybe some sort of hybrid, maybe like a Paladin, sounds pretty cool. And let's see, so Assassin, looks like we have some dual daggers there. I don't see any additional information to actually view this. Um, at length, uh, looks like Cleric gets a mace and a crossbow. So this is dual blades, dual daggers, and throwing knives. We have mace and a crossbow, fighter, okay. Um, a, maybe a battle axe and a shield and a some throwing axes, that's pretty cool. Duelist, maybe an S-dock of some sort and a crossbow, high blade, looks like a katana and a longbow. Paladin, straight sword or long sword and shield and throwing axes, ranger. Uh, I did play around with the ranger in the network test, and that was pretty cool because that, I forget the name of this weapon, but it's actually uh, like a cross spear with a, I guess, a rubber band to give it some sort of range attack, I think. Um, but it's also, I just noticed, sharp at both ends, so maybe just a, a bunch of combos. Plus, it looks like a short bow or a compound bow, and then the sage looks like some sort of, you know, it's not a curved sword, I, I don't know what you would call that sword and a staff, and then, I guess, something else for range attacks. Very interesting. Oh, man. I'm actually tempted to go with this class just because it looks so interesting. Hmm, that or Paladin? Paladin looks really cool as far as armor goes. <laughs> you you guys are going to hate me. I'm going Sage. I want to check out some of this magic. Uh, crime. This is really interesting. We have a lot of different crimes. Um, I have no idea what this is going to impact gameplay wise or story wise most likely just flavor text but we have alchemy arson blasphemy brigandry drunkenness forgery heresy <laughs> lasciviousness 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 i believe smuggling sumptuousness that oh it actually does impact an item so look at that so alchemist starts with some sort of potion arson i'm guessing firebombs Blasphemy, some sort of sage or incense burner. Brigandry, we get a dagger. Drunkenness, we get a wineskin. Forgery, a, a forgery. Heresy, we have some sort of stone tablet. Uh, lasciviousness, a lock of hair. 
smuggling, we get a lantern sumptuousness, a ring. Mm. I wonder if that sumptuousness would be a ring that actually increases salt acquisition. Uh, usury, which, oh gosh, what was usury? I had to look this up last time. Anyway, let me know in the comment below what usury is because I totally forget. But it looks like he had a bag of salt. Vagrancy, he had a little cross there. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go with sumptuousness. I want that ring. Uh, body type. We'll keep that the same. Ancestry, so this is probably going to be, yeah, pretty much your, just your skin color. Dusk, Highlander, Mountain, Oasis, Sun, Wood, Valley. I kind of like wood. Eye color, we'll leave it blue. Hair, all right, this is where we have to make Silvarius, right? He's not balding yet. Despite all of his adventures, he has not begun to go bald just yet. Might actually be unkempt and then just add... Assuming we can do some beard hair there. Beard hair, beard. Uh, we got to get some... Let's see. Ashen? No. Parchment? Parchment's kind of nice. Let's go parchment. All right, whiskers. Here we go. Yes. Bushy. Mustached. Pan's beard. Side whiskers. Now we're going gonna to go bushy. And we'll do the same... Did I do Ashen? No, I did Parchment. There we go. You know, he dyes his eyebrows. I think it's fair to say Silverius would totally dye his eyebrows. Anyway, six minutes in, let's dive in to Salt and Sacrifice. I am condemned. For the crime of sumptuousness, the realm's ultimate penalty awaited me. But there is another way to become a marked inquisitor. I drank the mage bane, I spoke the words. My jailer brings me to the western frontier where whispers of magic again stir. I live now only to hunt mages. Right. So, just like in the closed network test, we are bound. Our jailer was bringing us here to hunt mages. We have now been shot down, uh, presumably by magic. Looks like I can get some gear off of him. Well, not really get some gear, I guess, just... Well, no, it does look like we got our gear from him, and we also undid our mines there. So, let's take a look and see what we have. We have a lot here. Now, that's just going to be a necklace or a talisman slot blindfold bag so not really any information there okay I can actually put on my hood though that's nice my duskin hood wow there's a lot going on so we have physical cold light fire poison and dark defense of course you have weight you have class just like in salt and sanctuary so you're going to have different classes of armor um, that you have to kind of spec into up in the, or kind of in the right of this, we have Health, Stamina, Focus, which I believe is, is that going to be our Magic, maybe? We have a Carry Weight, we have Poise, Attack, and Ranged Attack, then my Abilities, there, there's my Stats, Holy Cow, Strength, Dexterity, Vitality, Will, Endurance, Arcana, <laughs> Conviction, Resolve, and Luck. Okay, so I have 19 total Weight Units to carry, and I am currently with the Hood at 6.5. Nine. Okay, then the, we have the Inquisitor's Dagger. Okay, that's how we read more about it. A dagger fit for slaying mages. A mage can only be truly and finally vanquished by a marked Inquisitor who must remove and destroy the mage's heart. The process is known colloquially as devouring. All right. wonder if we'll get different versions of that. So is there actually information on this? <laughs> A soft linen hood, far more effective at protecting the wear from the elements than from an enemy's blow. Canvas bag tight shut. All right. Uh, then we have the channeling rod. So class one channeling rod. Attack is 16. Arcana scaling is A. And our arcana is 7. So we have a little bit of bonus damage there. A wooden catalyst. Uh, excuse me. A wooden catalyzing rod paired with a bag of reagent powder. A channeling rod is used by tossing a handful of the powder at the rod's tip, producing a powerful bolt of energy. That's a cool description. I like that idea. So you actually have to use them in tandem. Then we have the Duskin Tunic. We're not going to read ev absolutely everything here. So 
since uh, lore on the Salt series is not exactly my forte anyway. But we have the Iron Band Stave. So we have the Stave is our, our melee weapon. So let's take, take a look here. We have Dexterity Scaling of D, Arcana Scaling of B. Damage blocked is 55%, so we can block up to 55% damage just by using the Stave to block. Blocking cost, 15% stamina, I would imagine. Okay. All right, so he, ooh, here we have some interesting, some more information. So force missile, left trigger plus X. In my case, it's going to be left trigger plus square. Uh, class one is forbidden glyph. Cost two, no cooldown. Uses focus. Launch three missiles of pure force energy to pursue your foes. Okay, so we actually have some homing ability, which is pretty cool. A runic stave, a favorite among sages of Alterstone Kingdom. All right, a little bit of background information there. Uh, what about the channeling rod? No, that didn't have any more combo information. Uh, ammunition. So remember in the closed network test, if you watch that, you kind of just make ammunition, I think, in bulk. And it works across all the different types, I believe. So replenish with iron, arona ore, excuse me, hold B to replenish. We can carry up to 16. And we have the Duskin Cuffs. Uh, all right, Signet Ring. Gold ring with some raised lettering on the frontage. Noble families use these to quickly identify an individual's worth at a mere glance. Okay, so no, this doesn't actually seem to have any inherent worth to us. But it is what it is. And then we have the Haze Decoction. A decoction brewed from haze spirals harvested from haze burnt husks. Quaff it, what a great word, to restore runic focus. So this is going to be my, my mana, my FP regeneration. Those burnt by haze are reduced to mindless shells by the arcane warp of magic. If an Inquisitor can gain combat resolve through that tragic lot, the realm may be better off for it. We replenish using haze spirals. We can carry up to three of them. Okay. So we can just go into our inventory, which we don't have any need to, right? Because it's all just going to show us exactly what we just had. Yep. Player info, there we go. Time played, mages devoured. We have item find. Everything that we saw on previous levels, or previous screens, rather. Uh, a journal, active mission, visit the mirror gate and partner's veil to accept a mission. We have a bestiary again, which is very cool. I like this. I like actually hunting enemies to learn more about them. And then, of course, the settings. All right, so it's probably gonna give me a bit of a tutorial, but we have light attacks again, right? Do we have kind of rolling attacks? looks to be about the same we have jump attacks that is my jump heavy here's my regular heavy just a nice stabbing start and then a nice combo there is the so light heavy light how about heavy light heavy okay and then let's see so holding left bumper that gives me my range option but look at that you hold the sack in your left hand and you i love that what a cool little idea that's really, really neat. So I have 16 ammunition, which I guess is, is that reagent powder, right? And then if I hold in left trigger, that's going to block. But it's also going to give me the option to use the magic. So if I hit square now, I would use magic. Uh, and then, let's see. Oh, so it's actually... So the Iron Band Stave... Oh, okay, so the Iron Band Stave actually has the magic stave. Oh, okay, there's my magic. <laughs> um, it actually has the magic and the melee weapon all in one. All right. And then, okay, I don't, I kind of want to rebind, because I have nothing on, on square, not square, but B right now, or circle to go back. I kind of want that to be my... Huh, I wonder what that is. So I'm holding that in, and it's giving me that inventory symbol. Oh, but that's because it said something about holding B to replenish. I just don't know if I like sprint by clicking in the left analog stick. Okay, you don't have to, though. You can double tap, or you can hold it. Okay, which is exactly what that just showed. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Combat tutorial. Okay, we got that. Oh, we just got a valley herb. Uh, let's try, let's try a range attack. That's really cool. Dodge through. All right. Another valley herb. 
We are going to have to take a look at these things if we want to learn about them, right? So Valley Herb, common material, red flowering herb, favored among inquisitors due to its use in concocting hearth and flasks. Unlike many craftable items, concocting hearth and flasks takes patience and diligence. Well, I don't actually know what that is yet. Okay, so here is the range combat tutorial. Love it. That's really, really cool. Also, is there any way to see what that... Or what those items are? I'm not items, but currency. I have presumably salt and something else. Maybe... I guess I get. we did have salt and gold in the last one, right? All right. Oh, okay. Tutorial boss time. That's not much damage, huh? Oh yeah, a lot more just from melee. Oh, get behind him. Okay, so this is definitely the boss you're meant to, you know, die to. I don't think they have any intention of you beating him first time around. Which is okay. We also had the unspeakable deep and salt and sanctuary, so that makes sense. Just gotta conserve stamina so I can keep attacking. Oh, careful now. Okay. Pretty straightforward fight. Actually, just gotta... Oh! Gotcha. Now I see why it's gonna be challenging. Alright. Definitely doable, but I don't think I'm going to do it this time around. Oh, wrong way. Oh, there we go. Okay, obliterate him. So I assume we're not going to get another attempt at that, and that's okay. That's okay. Nope, we're waking up somewhere else. Thank the gods you're stirring. Spell marked but stirring, so the mage bane right succeeded. Belel herself must have been watching over you when you encountered that beast in the woods. It was pure luck that stable hand Bren was nearby. You were on death's doorstep when he brought you back to Pardoner's Vale. Fortunately, I was able to nurse you back to health. You may call me Herbalist Shenna. I am the Inquisitor's healer at Pardoner's Vale. Here, take this hearth and flask. Quaff it the next time you are injured. We got hearth and flask times five. Perhaps you have questions. I've been here for three hexids and a day, and I'm not sure what to make of Partner's Veil. Inquisitors arrive, but not in the numbers that are needed. Inquisitors also disappear, and not in numbers that give me peace. I am an herbalist, a healer, and I'm as skilled as they come at crafting hearth and flask from Valley Herb. If you find any shimmering bud in the valley, Verdant Voice Trista can aid you in improving the potency of your hearth and flask. But I also had those valley herbs, right? And they're supposed, maybe those help to replenish my flasks. The names of the gods have fallen from our tongues. So it's no surprise to hear a trained mage hunter ask about Belial. Belial is the god of healing wind. It is said that she draws flies from the sick into an urn filled with magical oil where they become butterflies. As you do. Yes, spell marked. You would have died in those woods if not for the mage bane rite you undertook. This region is polluted with warped magic, but there's a benefit to it. Those who have successfully undergone the Mage Bane Rite can stave off death, becoming spellmarked instead. Not living, not dead, but animated by the mystical warp that infects this region. There is a way to atone yourself of the spellmark and return to life, but it requires a rare item known as a Guiltless Shard. The corruption of mages and their minions has a crystallizing effect on whatever purity remains. These solidified masses are shards of pure innocence. Hunt and devour mages and their minions if you wish to be atoned and become living again. Yes, the mage being right. You committed the crime of sumptuousness, didn't you? You know I did. Perhaps your memory is foggy. When you became a marked inquisitor, you would have undergone a mage being right. You would have drunk an elixir known as Magebane and spoke cursed words from a forgotten tongue. Many Inquisitor initiates make missteps in the ritual and it doesn't take hold. Unfortunately, the only way to know if the Magebane rite is successful is for one who has undertaken it to die in the presence of magic. Many Inquisitor initiates have fallen in Austin Valley 
never to rise again. You are fortunate in that respect. Stay in good health, Inquisitor. Okay, so now we have a hearth and flask. And that is restorative elixir. Concoctions like these exist in wide varieties, but all utilize in some quantity the Red Valley Herb, a flowering plant with healing properties. One of the most famous recipes is called Queen's Kiss, named for the common belief that only a noble's touch can cure certain types of infection. So we replenish with Valley Herb. All right. Hardener's Veil. Absolutely gorgeous game. Love it. Absolutely love everything about it. Now, previous game did have illusory walls, so we're going to have to be on the lookout for those. And who do we have here? Is this going to be Stable Hand Bren? By Tarnmund's hand, you're awake. I'm Warpsmith Ezekiel, but you can call me Zack. Welcome to Pardoner's Vale. But before we get too far into it, you should go speak with Champion Hera. She's down the steps to the west. Okay. So this is going to be my blacksmith here, crafting equipment. And of course, I can't do anything. We have to hunt mages to obtain materials. A little bit of Monster Hunter-esque uh, crafting there. All right. So we know from the network test, those shimmering hooks, that's going to be a grapple point once we have the grapple hook, which we don't have. And we can enhance our equipment here at this alchemy station. But for this, we would need a sphere. Looks like we need it for both of those. And this is just just going to be... Oh, no. I can actually cycle through. Looks like it all takes a sphere, which is interesting. Hmm. Okay. Be on the lookout for a sphere. And, yeah, I can't quite get up there. And I'm going to guess this is Hera. You are Silverius, I trust. I am Champion Hera. I'm technically in charge here at Partners Vale, but I do my penance here just as you do. You must embark at once to Ashbourne Village, but to do so you must first speak with Rune Reader Diadella. Descend the stone steps to the west until you reach a cat, then descend more stone steps east until you reach the pond. Then speak to Rune Reader Diadella by the mirror gate. Okay, same information there. Right, so she wants us to go west, so naturally we will go... Okay, we got some training dummies, so we'll go to the east. And we have upgrade hunter tools, which is going to be... All right. Ammunition, haze decoction, or hearth and flasks. And in order to do so, I need two things... Well, actually different things that they don't tell me, so we're going to have to be on the lookout for those symbols. And it looks like only the hearth and flask and the haze decoction actually change anything. I would imagine that that one is the shimmering bud because that is what we were told about earlier on. And who are you? Hello, Inquisitor. My name is Trista. I am a verdant voice, one who speaks for the herbs, fungi, and minerals. By the way, just so you know, F-U-N-G-I can be fungi, Fungi or fungi, they are all acceptable, just so you're aware. You are welcome to use my apothecary's tools to restock and improve your supplies. Are you lost? If you're looking for Rune Reader Diadella, you can find them and the Mirror Gate through that cave to the west. There are also some supplies in there that I can use to replenish your hearth and flask. And if I keep going to the east, what happens? Also, it looks like that little part of my health bar that is reduced... That is the affliction that I was told about in, um, goodness gracious, I'm already forgetting the name of it, but I need to find a certain shard in order to eliminate that, it would seem. Okay, so that door's locked. So it definitely is some sort of, oh, there's the cave. Uh, some sort of, you know, penalty for dying, as there should be. Inside this chest we have... Okay, three valley herbs and some Irona ore. Doesn't open from this side. Okay, that's how you know it's a soul's like. And is this Irona ore? <laughs> yes, it is. And it's the best animation. That's the best anima animation I've ever seen. Emanation. Goodness gracious. Locked. Okay, so let's wall jump around back out. 
Now, I kind of want to go back to Trista. Oh, I can't, can I? Nope. Oh, yes, I can. Yes. And I only want to do this. Oh, wait a minute. Can I search that? Oh, I can't search those. Whoa, silver, valley herbs, hay spiral, other stuff. <laughs> let's go back to Trista real quick. And let's see. Nope, that didn't do bugger all. Okay. <laughs> no, never mind. Never mind. Um, well, let's go this way. Since we were told by Hera to go west, let's go west for now. Also, I have this huge chest. Oh, this is just my stockpile. Okay, so I can store things in there. What do you have here? This is Valley Herb and Bloodberry. <laughs> Rolling is so satisfying. Oh, more Irona. Plenty of Irona. And inside this chest, we get fire bombs. Great. We can cycle through just with left and right in the D pad. And let's go up here. Probably can't do anything. Need, yeah, need the hook shot or the grapple hook for that. Oh, someone else here. Oh, look, we got Torrent. Hey there, Inquisitor. Call me Stable Hand Brent. I suppose Herbalist Shenna told you about your lucky escape, eh? Champion Hera told me that you should speak with Rune Reader Diadella by the Mirror Gate as soon as possible. You can find them at the pond. If you find the Camp Cat, descend the stone stairs to the east of him. I love that they just give directions based on a cat. And you could pet the horse. Fantastic. Hey, Guiltless Shard times two. The Guiltless Shard is what we needed in order to eliminate that negative effect we have on our health. Again, name I can't remember. Maybe we have to go back to Shenna? Oh. Oh, we can level up here at the at this statue. Doesn't really say what it is. Um, insufficient salt, of course. I need 400. I have 32. Okay, so left salt 21 is... Oh, that must be silver? I would imagine. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, and then there's also the tr tree of skill. Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is the one thing that I didn't really love. I don't love the sprawling skill. It, it, this is not a skill tree. This is a skill web for sure. And uh, holy cow. I mean, you kind of have to know where you're going in order to uh, to really advance that direction. So we'll have to take a look at that once we have enough salt. And then we have another grapple point. I kind of want to go back to Shenna now that I have guiltless shards. Although, I don't know if... Can I open this? No. I don't know if it's worth using a guiltless shard just yet, only because if I use it now... Actually, maybe I just use it from my inventory. Yeah. Okay, spell mark. That's what it's called, spell mark. So I could do it right now. And sure enough, yeah, so that gets rid of that penalty to health. All right. I should have actually read about that, huh? No, it's it's all it is. So it's stolen from the twisted heart of a mage. So it's crystallized purity stolen from the heart of a twisted mage. All right. Sorry about all the boxes and whatnot. So this first episode is going to go a little bit longer, but typically I'll be aiming for about, <laughs> there's the cat, about 30 minutes or so for these episodes. Cat has antlers. Everything has antlers, apparently. Nothing there. I'm going to guess that that's locked. Sure is. Most likely unlocked as we maybe bring NPCs back here. I hope we can bring NPCs back. I like when a hub actually becomes more alive. Some sort of lift system. Can I jump down there? Locked. As you would imagine. Okay, so here's the pond. So we can set runes. There is Rune Reader Diadella. Uh, cooperation board? Hey, all right. Create a passkey to match with the cooperator. You will likely be seeing some co-op actually in this uh, in this playthrough. So then down here, that was locked. Okay, so the only place we have to go now is talk to Rune Reader Diadella. Who's very mystical, I would imagine. Are you ready to enter the mirror gate? Yes, you've only just arrived and the magic in these woods is not well known even among Inquisitors. Behind you is the Mirror Gate, a gateway between distant locales. I am called Rune Reader Diadella. I am the Keeper of the Mirror Gate. The warp of magic has already begun to poison these woods, rendering travel by land nearly impossible. But the Mirror Gate can lead us right to those cruel and twisted mages that plague the realm. 
The mirror gate is activated by arcane words spelled in rune stones. As a marked inquisitor, you must always be seeking new rune stones. I can share a word of rune stones with you. Travel to Ashbourne Village. Choose the runes from the basket, then step into the light. Okay. Now, I wonder if there are going to be secret areas. I mentioned this in the closed network test because right now we are just given an option to select Ashbourne Village, but I can also put in these runes. Do I need to actually learn a word in runestones in order to go there? Or could I put in five random runestones, maybe get it right, and go somewhere else way beyond my skill level? I don't know. I saw scenes of chaos and destruction in Ashbourne Village, but a silent desolation has gripped it since. The trade town, once hopeful, is now a warped battlefield. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Let's go to Ashbourne Village. And off we go. Hmm. All right, these, I imagine, are online items. Okay, yeah, so these are messages. Obelisk, regain health and focus, replenish all consumables, restock all materials. So I can rest and resupply, return to camp, or just cancel. Of course, I'll just cancel. I don't need to replenish anything. Good, good, good. All right, more. Ah, there's an NPC. So we got more herbs and um, blood berries. Of course, that's not going to open yet. We need that grapple. All right, let's push on. If these messages and whatnot get a bit intrusive, I may actually go offline. Gen Ooh, Tender Vine. That, that is one of the items I needed, I believe. So. There we go. Got you. Valley Herb. Come on. And what's in the bag here? Silver, Irona, or, or Hay Spiral, and Wispley. Oh, you're big. Whoop. Come on. Come this way. Nope. Face the right way. <laughs> okay. And have a little bit of Pursuers. Oh, Jeepers. Wow. <laughs> Across the map. Fantastic. Love it. There we go. And we'll go up first. I saw the cave down below. Okay, Hay Spiral and Irona Ore. Can I... At what point can I hit you? Well, not yet. Let's do you. Alright. It's over to the west here. More Valley Herb. Okay, so that's going into... Oh, look at that! That's what holding B does. So if I just actually hold this, I'll replenish using some Irona ore into ammunition. Okay, that's pretty cool that you can just do that on the fly. All right. Oh, jeez, I don't know why I didn't roll that. Um, I believe there's a trap here, isn't there? <laughs> I thought maybe I would jump over. Okay, we need to go ahead and... Wow! Oh, you are just following me, aren't you? Look at the look at the jumps on you. Ooh. Okay, does take a while for healing, which is okay. There we go. Got you. All right. Hmm. I do have the haze decoction, so I can use for more for more magic. The Pursuer's spell, or I guess, what is it actually called? I want to use the right terminology here. This is Forbidden Glyph. It's very weak. Very, very, very weak. Okay, so that's where I go with my grapple hook. Love that you can look around here. So, I guess I can only replenish ammunition, at least right now on the fly. Which I think I will at this point, just because I have so much Irona ore, right? So one Irona ore per ammunition slot. Nothing I can do here. OK, 
Can I get anywhere up here by using wall jump, though? Seems I can. Oop, in the chest. Executioner's Maul. So we get a hammer class weapon. And hey, a guilt shard. Great. I'm, I am imagining I'm going to be using some of those. All right, so we got a new weapon already. I imagine I don't have the ability to use it because it's a great hammer. Wow, 30 damage. 30 damage. I don't know. I could go strength arcana. That could be kind of cool. I mean, my strength and dexterity are already pretty even. That could be neat. Maybe maybe that's what I want to do. Strength arcana. Okay, let's do some backtracking here. Did we go to the edge here? Yeah, because there was a spot, I think, for a grapple. Now, once again, there is no map. There's no map in this, but it is hub-based, as you saw. So, Partner's Veil is kind of be, going to be your hub. And you will just travel with rune stones to different areas. So, the lack of map might not be as noticeable. Root Seal Cavern. You know what, though? The glyph is going to be really good against these flying creatures. Jump up here. I know you can. Okay. Oh. More Irona. Good, good. So far, this game is just playing like an absolute dream. Oh, I love bouncing them like that. That's great. What do we get? Irona? Nope. Like that little combo there. All right. I think we need to quaff another heart then. Oh, oh, oh. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> Got to remember to jump. Come on, you've just been playing a lot of Elden Ring. Jumping is the name of the game. Another Gilda Shard, okay. Gray Moss Mire, and we got Golden Candle and a Bronze Snuffer. I think that was for multiplayer. Golden Candle. Golden Candle wrapped in brilliant cloth. It is a beacon for fellow Inquisitors. Initiate search for a visiting cooperator. Cannot be used while spell... Ah, okay. So you need to use a guiltless shard to make sure you're not spell marked in order to do co-op. And then this cancels any active faction hunt search. Uh, we didn't actually look at... Oh, poison bomb. When did I get a poison bomb? That must have been one of the chests that I didn't notice about. Court glass vessel that appears opaque. It is actually filled with thick green gas, the product of a sealed, specially treated moss. Explodes on contact, adding heavy poison buildup to all nearby. Okay. Bloodberry. Oh, eat it to restore a small amount of health. That's very nice. I have a couple of those. Firebomb. Just like the poison, but with fire. I'm going to go ahead and eat a uh, bloodberry there. Top off. And there is a grapple point, so I'll have to be coming back here. Uh, let's keep kind of going to the west. I see more Irona. There's hay spirals. That's <laughs> just the best mining animation. I would love to know um, it, how they came. Oh, okay. Um, what if I? That works kinda, but also not great. Okay. Do that again. Wrong, wrong direction. Oh, nice block. You're blocking most of my damage, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Hmm. You know what? What about a uh, little firebomb action, huh? That's the wrong one. I guess I just used... Okay, I have to hold it in. That's what it is. All right. Oh, nice damage over time. Really nice damage over time. Oh, 
but I have no idea how close you are to death. Ah! Hey, there we go. We got him. Not bad. We get Mossfire. Not Asfire? Aspire? But, uh, Mossfire. Seal. Devour three hearts of named mages to proceed. So what did we just pick up? Looks like it's probably going to be a crafting material, right? A core of purified magic encased in mossy stone used to enhance equipment. Okay. All right, I dig it. Some more Irona. We have Bloodberry we can eat if we need to. We don't really need to right this moment. Gray Moss Mire, so we're above there, which is where we got the co-op equipment. I could rest and replenish. I, I guess I should. It'll give me my heart back, right? And it'll actually give me, yeah, it'll give me my magic back, which is even more important. All right, let's proceed for just a little bit longer, then we're going to have to wrap up part one. But so far, I am really, really enjoying this. Uh-oh. Yorex, Necklace of Ears. Oh, okay, good damage. Back up. A little bit of sewers action. I want to get close. I just don't know, you know, at some point they all kind of gain the ability to attack backwards. And that's a that's a dangerous position to be in. I got to get some stamina back. Back up, back up. All right, almost at uh, about a third. That stagger actually kind of worried me. Back up. Wrong way. <laughs> Okay, he's at half. Not bad. There we go. There's a combo. Back up. Whoa, that's a new new move. But he's not actually changing direction, it seems. Oh, that would have, I think, hit me. I'm not sure. All right, we're doing all right. I would say we're doing all right. I would say we're doing better than all right, actually. I do love that cursed glyph. Oh, why? I keep doing that. I don't know that that would actually hit me. Try hitless. <laughs> I'll take it. Cool fight. Vanquished. Also, I just got an achievement through Epic that I didn't know you could get. I'm going to have to turn those off because even though you couldn't see it, apparently, I could hear it, which means you could likely hear it. Emerald Feather. So where does that come into play? It's not a key item. It's not in my crafting. Okay, here it is. It's Oh, it's a utility artifact. 4.9% range damage. 7.3% salt retained on death. And I can equip that. So does that go here? No. Does that go in my ring slot? No. Where does that go? <laughs> uh, doesn't go in the Inquisitor's Dagger, which makes sense. I don't know where that goes. I'm just not seeing it. Unless I haven't opened up the ability yet. Oh, interesting. Why can it only go in that third slot? Because it's a utility artifact? Are these different types of artifacts? Okay. Well, there we go. I'm trying to see. Does it actually show somewhere on your person? I don't see it. I don't see it. All right. Hey, first boss down. And you know what? I would say we are about to get the grapple hook. We just killed our first boss, and I think that's a good place to end it for now. 
So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying. Let me know if you are playing this down below. I am playing on the Epic Game Store. I may be picking it up on PS5 as well so I can play with more of you. If you are playing, let me know. Maybe we can get some co-op in. I'd love to highlight that on this playthrough. Um, this playthrough is not going to be as serious as my Elden Ring playthrough was. Um, I want to have fun with this. So if you want to do some co-op, let me know. But thanks so much for watching. And I will see you. I don't know how to end this. One of those? No. How about one of these? Next time. Okay.